faith is salvation. It occurs in the Bible 164 times. It occurs in the scripture 158 verses, 115 times in the Old Testament. It occurs 43 times in the New Testament. The biblical idea of salvation involves three notions. The first notion is the rescue from danger, harm, or even death of an individual, a group, or even a nation. Second of all, it is the renewing of the spirit. Humanity failed from their original condition of moral purity into a state of sin. Third, it is the restoration of a right relationship with God. The effects of sin is separation from God. Yes, right. We find in both the Old Testament and the New Testament of God's salvation, which includes rescue, renewal, and restoration, and is accomplished through the person and the work of Christ and him alone, the Father's Son. In the Old Testament, salvation sometimes refer to deliverance from danger, deliverance of the weak from an oppressor, and the healing of sickness, and even the release from captivity. There was a time that salvation was not needed because man was created in the image of God and in the likeness of God. So he had a relationship with God. There was nothing between him and God. It's, but man had a free will that had to be exercised to obey or to disobey. Genesis 2, 16 and 17 said, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the God you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Before man died to God, we didn't need salvation. We was right with God. But the decision was made in Genesis 3 and 12. It said that, then the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did. So he ate. And, and this, the first act of salvation goes back to the covering and the renewal of Adam, I mean the removal of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. Right. Genesis 3, 21 through 24 says, As also for Adam and his wife, the Lord made tunics of skin, meaning that was a covering for their sin. He clothed them. That means that there was a blood sacrifice. From the very beginning, God was showing us that man had made a debt that he could not pay. Right. You see, we can't save ourselves. Salvation only comes through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 22 says, in 3 it says, Then the Lord said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. So God had to remove them. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. After the fall, people were marked by strife and difficulties, corruption and violence. It dominated their world. It kind of looks like our world today, don't it? You know, all of these things are what dominate our world today. Genesis 6. 11 through 13 says, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh have come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them will the earth. So the second act of salvation was the saving of Noah and his family. These eight people was a, another chance for mankind. God revealed his grace and his mercy by providing an ark of salvation for them. We have an ark of salvation today. That ark is Jesus Christ. The Lord 
made a covenant with Abraham, promising to bless all the nations of the earth through him. Genesis 12, 1 through 3 says, Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. It is God's intent to provide salvation for us. All right. God used Moses later in Israel's history, then and now. He proved that he is stronger than the false gods of Egypt, which represents the world. And that means that he is stronger today than any enemy that we can have. He showed to be wiser than the wisdom of Pharaoh. And he showed to be more powerful than the Egyptian army. God provided salvation for his people. Then, and he provides salvation for his people now. This is only God can provide salvation. That's why John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In the New Testament, Salvation by grace alone, through faith in the person and the work of Jesus Christ and him alone. It's not how good we are. It's not how good a people we are. It's not who we help. But it's through Jesus Christ and him alone. None of us can work our way into heaven because none of us can ever get ourselves righteous enough or perfect enough to go before a perfect God. Right. So we have to have a Savior. Yes. God's eternal purpose is to save sinners. Through Christ's death on the cross, redemption usually comes with a blood sacrifice. Yeah. All New Testament writers witness to the, the importance of death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for salvation. And no matter what person it is that preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ, if they do not Preach the gospel of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. The gospel has not come forward. And we need the gospel. Mm -hmm. So 1 Corinthians, Jesus Christ is our salvation. So 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 says, mm -hmm. For I deliver to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sin according to, to the, the scripture, God. and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. Acts 4 and 12 says, Not is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under the heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The salvation that comes through Christ is three tenths. Past, present, and future. Number one, when a person believes in Christ, they are saved. Acts 16 and 31 say, So they say, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. You and your household. Right. Romans 10, 9 and 10 say, That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Number two, but we are also in the process of being saved from the power of sin. Romans 8, 13 and 14 says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death, the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many are as led by the Spirit of God, these are sons oh, of God. Lord. Philippians 2 and 12 says, Therefore, my brother, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, 
not as in my presence only, mm -hmm. but now much more my in my absence. absence. Yes. Work out your own, your own salvation with fear, fear and, and trembling. trembling. Now let's make sure we get a good understanding of that. He's not talking about your soul salvation because Christ has done that. But to continue what Christ has started in you. You are weak. We have to grow in him now that we are saved. This is why we go to Bible study. All right. This is why we come to Sunday school. Okay. And this is why we have worship on Sunday. On. And this is why we are here today for this conference. Right. Because this is why we have to learn how God wants us to live our life and how we are saved and who it is that we represent. Right. Finally, we shall be saved from the very presence of sin by trusting in Jesus alone for salvation. His righteousness is imputed Amen. to us, the believer who is still sinners. Mm. So God now treats us, the believer who is still sinners, as the righteousness of Christ. <laughs> Romans 3, 21 through 26 says, But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. to all and on all who believe. Mm -hmm. For there is no difference. Mm -hmm. For all have seen it uh -huh. and fell short uh, of the glory of God. Yeah. Being now. justified freely by his now. grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, yes. whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith yes. to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, God has passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just Mm -hmm. And the justifier mm -hmm. of the one who has faith in Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Now, at the moment of conversion, the sinner becomes a saint. Sanctified. Not free from actual sin in his life, but free from the death penalty of sin. All right. The Holy Spirit actually indwells the sinner, the believer now. All right. At the moment of salvation. So to conclude, this theme of salvation, it is a free gift from God that rescues free. the believer from sin and sin consequences. It renews the believer to a holy life and restores the believer to a right relationship with God for all eternity. Ransom. Paid in full okay. is salvation. Okay. First Timothy 2, 3 through 6 says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, mm -hmm. who desires all men yes. to be saved yes. and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. yes. For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, yes. the Christ. man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom Mm -hmm. For all to be testified in due time. We start a lifetime process of growth in Christ's likeness that is called sanctification, which is our next claim mm -hmm. that will be headed up by Reverend Dr. Michael King. That's all right. So, just like to be here. Yes, it is. Amen. And uh, when the assignments went out, I knew that they were in a relationship. I was wondering how this thing was going to work out. It was hard to stay off your toes. You really can't talk about one without talking about it. Amen. So, this we need to understand. We are saved as Christians. We are saved. 
file at the same time. Your opinions. File at the same time. We will be used. All right? We have been justified. And as soon as we are justified, the process comes of sanctification. Mm -hmm. And that ends with glorification, mm -hmm. which doesn't happen until we see Jesus. Mm -hmm. right. But we get closer and closer mm -hmm. on the journey. Mm -hmm. And so let me give you the definition of sanctification, a simple definition. Mm -hmm. It's the process by which they believe. Starts after you believe. It's a process by which a believer is conformed more and more mm -hmm. into the image mm -hmm. of Christ. Right. That's, that's, what, that's what that process is about. It's a lifelong process. Mm -hmm. We're going through it as long as we live. Did you know? Now, uh, however, we need to be careful because. We have the tendency in the organized church to think that you get saved, as long as you say you trust in God, it doesn't matter how you live. What that now? And uh, that's just not so. And uh, if you see uh, people and they've been around church for a while and you're wondering because of their activity, their behavior is suspect, it is suspect. All right? Because here's the deal. He just told you that salvation is of God. Mm -hmm. You don't save yourself. Amen. Mm -hmm. God does it, right? Mm -hmm. But sanctification is of God, too. Mm -hmm. hey, you will say, is anything to love God? Mm -hmm. All right, so, so people make excuses for what they want to do. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Because, <laughs> got this, I got a picture. If God keeps us, and he does. You gotta understand something. You can't. Amen. You mean to tell me we think God can't keep us? What, what, what did Jesus say? He says, Father, everything that you put in my hand, mm -hmm. I would. I can't. Mm -hmm. I didn't lose nothing of what you gave me. Mm -hmm. So sanctification is of God. Yes, we have to work it out, but even in working it out, God works that out too. He gave you the classic text. Philippians 2, 12. Yes, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Fear and trembling. Oh, I want to get it right. Oh, I want to get it right. Oh, I want to get it right. Because it's hard to get it right. But you can do it because it's God. Yes. Did he say that? Yes. Who works mm -hmm. in you? God doing it. Mm -hmm. It's just going to get done. All right. Right? So we got to understand this. So, so here it is. My, 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 I guess that's. Part of my introduction. So let's go to Philippians 4. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do in these next few uh, uh, passages of Scripture is I want to show that sanctification is of God. So Ephesians, sorry, I said, Ephesians 4, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Now the, the, the real meat of this is in at the end, verse 24. Watch this. It's this. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should. And my people will say now, right? Mm -hmm. Because sanctification starts after you're saved. Mm -hmm. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk, y'all there? Mm -hmm. As the what? Mm -hmm. Rest of the Gentile. Folk who are not saved, you, you don't walk like them anymore. In the futility of their mind, they don't, they don't know any better. Having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, they don't know about God, they don't know the ways of God. Because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, they've done wrong so wrong, they're wrong feel right. Mm -hmm. Have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanliness with mm -hmm. greediness. Mm -hmm. that, that's how the unseen folk mm -hmm. live right? Mm -hmm. He is verse 12. But mm -hmm. the same folk who are now in the process of being sanctified. Well, you are, but you have not so learned right. We know better. Mm -hmm. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus that you put off. Y'all there? Right. Concerning your former cup. You don't act like you used to act. Because yeah. that was the old man. Yeah. And watch this, sir. You cannot deal with the old man because the old man will never get better. Yeah. 
The old man grows corrupt according to the sheep of lust. So you have to put off the old man and get a new man. Yeah, if any man be in Christ, he's what now? New man. Man. Come on with you don't get better, you get different. Come on with it. Day two now. Come on now. Come on with it. And get it up, verse 23, <laughs> and be renewed. That's what, that's what sanctification is all about. Renew. Renewal. Renewal. And be renewed in the spirit of your what? Mind. When, 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 when God touches your mind and you start thinking right, then you start acting right. That's it. And that you put out, put on the what? The new, new man. man. Watch this. Here's the new man. Which was created. Mm -hmm. see, high, according to who? God. The new man God is created according to God. And guess what's going to happen? In true what? Righteousness. Right. And holiness because it is of God. Oh. What's that now? Okay, but 
but a lot of times we don't understand what he's talking about. Come on now, make it clear. That's not saying that when you get in trouble, it's going to turn out like you want to. Watch out now. Can I get a witness? All right. yeah, that's not what he's saying. This is talking about how it is that as believers, we are going to make this journey because God's going to see, see to it that we do make it. Come on with mm -hmm. it. It's talking about God doing us good in the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's happening to you here right now, it might not work out like you want it to. But, but when you put together everything that you've gone through in life, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent, God's going to make it all work out. There you go. Uh, I know well, that. Do I have a witness? Yeah. There you go. Now, watch this now. We're talking about sanctification. Watch this. 28. It is. And we know that all things work together for good, right? Mm -hmm. To everybody, right? No. 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 Not everybody. Not everybody. She's off. She's off. She's off. And we know that all things work together for good to those who what? Oh, God. Oh. That's right. And love the Lord don't mean you just say I love the Lord. Right. Anybody right. say I love the Lord. Mm -hmm. Talk about that all the time. To those who are the what? The call. Now watch this. Hold up. Call according to what? His, His purpose. He has a purpose. Yeah. And when he calls you, he calls you for a purpose. Yes. Yes. Are y'all with me? Yes. Yes. Right. Come on with me. Now, now he goes on to explain it in 29. Mm -hmm. This is how you're going to fall into his purpose that he has for you. For whom he foreknew. Mm -hmm. Everybody he knew he was going to save. Y'all yes, there? Mm -hmm. Everybody he knew he was going to save. Yes, it don't happen by accident. God knows it. Y'all remember Jeremiah? Mm -hmm. yep. Did he tell us that before you were formed in your life? Before you were born? I what? Knew, knew you. And I said you were going to be a preacher. All right. All right. Hallelujah. I wish I had a good one to hear. Mm -hmm. All right. So everybody he knew he was going to save. For whom he foreknew. He also, he did is pre. Yes, yes, he decides beforehand how it's going to end up with you. Yes, sir. That's what destiny is. Mm -hmm. He predestined for what? Glory to him. Sanctification. To be what? Conform. He said that when I save you, I'm going to put you in a process to where you're going to continually move and move until you get like me. Lord Jesus. Right to be conformed to the image of his what? Son. Mm -hmm. Why does he want us to be like Jesus? That Jesus, that he might be the firstborn of what? Many oh, brethren. Right. He's going to make us more and more like Jesus because he wants Jesus to have a whole lot of brothers and sisters that just like yeah. Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Y'all see it right here, right? Yes, oh, God's going to make sure that it happens. All right. That's what this is talking about. He's going to make mm -hmm. sure that it happens. How do we know? Verse 30, moreover, whom he predestined. Mm -hmm. Everybody who he says don't get there to be like he wants them to be. He what? He called. Oh. And whom he called, guess what he did? He just about to put you in the right relationship. Going to the and everybody he put in the right relationship, whom he justified, he it is. It is now what he said is already done. He glorified. All right now. He who has begun mm -mm. a good work in you will. There's no such thing God starting you and you don't get there. Because he's going to make sure that you get there. I know I'm going I'm getting there. You know why I know I'm going to get there? Because I'm not left to me. Because if it was left up to Mike, I wouldn't get there. All right. I cut it short in a minute, right? As soon as oh, somebody right. cuts me out, don't do me right. All right. There too now. Amen, hey, somebody. Come on with it. Everybody here like me. Come on with it, John. You said, you know what? I'm tired. I'm tired of all the Christian stuff, you know? There too now. I'm going to do it right. Oh, you're wrong when you do all this, all this do good stuff. There too now. Y'all end up in there. Come on with it. And the Lord had to sit you down and say, what's up? Is that right? I got you. You're going to make this journey. Because I said something. All right. That's good, right? Yes, so, so here, let me move on try to try to get this. So here it is. We see he does it. That's clear. Mm -hmm. I don't want the details. When he does it, what does it look like? Right? How does he go about doing all this wonderful stuff we've been talking about? What are the fine-tuned details that let us know? Well, Thing. One, you've already touched on, is that he does it through his spirit. Right? The Holy Spirit. When you are saved, you receive the gift of the uh, Holy Spirit. Holy spirit. Holy spirit. The Bible says that if you do not have Romans 8 and 9, if you don't have the spirit, you're not his. That's right. That's right. That's he said that, right? Mm -hmm. And so in Galatians 5 and 16, he says, walk in the spirit, spirit. and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. flesh. 
and it says that the spirit wars against the flesh, flesh. and the flesh wars against the spirit. Why? So that you don't go out there and cuss folk out when you want to cuss folk out. Yeah, too, now. It says that you don't do the stuff you want to do. Yeah, the hand. I like and to use the you hand. You want to do stuff we ain't got no need to do. All right. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Anybody ever been there and you and you were, and you anybody ever cried at night because the Lord wouldn't let you do something? Yeah. yeah. You better yeah. be me. <laughs> you better be me. I mean, you like Lord, now why in the world you gonna let them get away with that? Yeah. Do me like that. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> we got no one trying. No one trying. <laughs> so he, God does it now. He sanctifies us through His Spirit. Uh -huh. But he also sanctifies us by discipline. Mm -hmm. Go to Hebrews 12. I, I'm, I'm kind of sure that I'm not the only somebody who has received a good spike in the door. I'm pretty sure I'm not. Well, I second the motion. <laughs> You got the hell. So Hebrews 12, 5, and you have forgotten that the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. You love these you children when you're saved. My son, do not despise the chasing of the Lord. Don't get mad at him when he book you. Mm -mm. We just oh. right? Nor be discouraged when you're rebuked like him. Just because the Lord has a discipline, you don't get down on yourself. Mm. You know that? Mm -hmm. that must say, Lord. It is. That's that's showing that he loves you. For whom the Lord was. That's what he does. He's going to discipline you. He's going to chase you. Chase. And scourge us. Y'all know what that is, don't you? Mm -hmm. Every son whom he would receive. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. Mm -hmm. For what son is that whom my father does not chase him? Mm -hmm. I just told you when you asked me about my son, I said he needed a spanking. Didn't I hear that? Yes, yes, yes. He's 32, but he needs one. Yes, yes. <laughs> Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Who I thank daddy, he told me when he needed you, I'm a better man. Yes, yes, yes. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father's spirit and live? For they indeed for a few days chasing us as seemed best to them. But when God chasing us, it's for our profit. Why? That we may be partakers of what? Yes. He spikes us, he corrects us, he disciplines us so that we can become more like him. Oh, yeah. well. He is. Now, no chasing it seems to be joyful at present. You don't like it when it happens to you. Painful, right? Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, when God keeps on pulling out his Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. discipline, mm -hmm. look what he says. After it, this is what it's all about. It what? Heals. Mm -hmm. The peaceable fruit. Mm -hmm. Of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So when God disciplines you, it brings forth fruit out of your life that He wants from you. Mm -hmm. So He sanctifies us by discipline. We also do it by His word. Do it word. That's right. We also do it by His word. That's right. Ephesians yeah. 5, 25, mm -hmm. 26. He had, he had to help the church out because he started talking about husbands and wives. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Right? It wasn't really about husbands and wives, but it was, it, it, it's, a, it's a good illustration. Mm -hmm. That's right. And he said, husband, you need to do what? Love Love you. You need to love them, right? Like, but right? you can do it in a certain kind of way, too. Love the church. <laughs> that boy. Husband, love your wife just as what? Christ also what? Love the church. Hold up, stop right there. That boy. But how did he love the church? That he boy. Gave he gave. Hold up. He died. He died. He died for the church. Yes, yes, yes. Amen, somebody. Yes, so yes. So I have to die for the one. For your wife. Y'all like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. When she said, baby, do so and so, I don't feel like doing it. I go ahead and do it anyway. I die. Go on, say it. Go on, say it now. Amen. Don't get on that. I thought it was in the bag. <laughs> say it again. She talking about now because she want to move back to Great Hope. I die. Let go. <laughs> Where I want to go or not, do I win? You were dead Amen. from the drop. It is. It is. <laughs> he, 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 he loved your wives as he loved the church and gave himself all. He did verse 26. That he might 
That is. Do what? Sanctify and do what? Cleanse up. Right. But you don't do it any kind of way, though. Mm -mm. With the washing the of the water. Uh -huh. Back. Of the word. 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 We need yeah, the word. word. We don't need all of this talking and this hooping and this humming and this hollering and this putting on and this carrying on. Tell it to, man. Open up a Bible and do something with it. Tell it to, man. All right, all right. So then, I got to close on this one. Take your time. Take your time. So then, if, 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 if that is the case, then now we got to talk about the importance of the pastor. Mm -hmm. all, right. all right. All right. Chapel. Stand, Stand on. We got to do it. Stand on. <laughs> Amen. All of my priest brethren in here, we got to do it. Stand on. You got to talk about the importance of the pastor. You can't be a charlatan. Chapel. You can't be a, a howling. Huh? Chapel. A harlot. A harlot, yeah. A harlot. You got to be the shepherd. Okay. You got to know these sheep God gave me. You, you stand up and do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. 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 No. We're in Ephesians 5, back over 4. When, when Jesus ascended to heaven, he gave gifts. Mm. And he gave gifted people. Mm -hmm. To the church. Y'all in verse 11. 40 11. God did this. And he himself gave some. All right. He did. All right. To be what? Apostles. Right. Some prophets. Some evangelists. And some here that we can have connected. Pastors. And teachers. No. This is the way I say pastors who teach. All right. Teaching pastors. Yes, yeah, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. What, what, what are they supposed to do? For the protecting or the equipping of the saints so that they can do the what? Work the mission until they grow up and grow up until they know better when folks trying to prove it. Yeah, too, now. It's right here. I mean, I, 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 I paraphrase it, but can I do it? It's right here. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man mature to the measure to the stature of the food of his Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and cared about by every wind of doctrine. You better say yeah. every wind. Every wind. Every wind. So because I care about my folks, I'm going to use the word to teach them so that other folks won't miss me. Go on, hit on, man. Well, now watch this. Watch this. Oh, watch this. Watch this. Go, go to First Timothy. You know we gotta get there. I'm almost out of here. Go to First Timothy. Watch this. First Timothy. Let me. You know, cause God kind of bad. First Timothy three talks about the qualifications of pastors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. this too. He's talking about Caucasian. Now, what I want you to see is this. Everything that, except for one thing, talks about the character. Everything that, except for one thing, talks about character. In first, uh, in first Timothy 4, 12, it talks about that. He told him, you need to be an example in word and in conduct. So the pastor needs to live right. You better tell him. <laughs> you better tell him. <laughs> while he's preaching and teaching right. That's right. That's right. Watch this though. Yeah. Qualification of a pastor. Everything is character except for one thing. You find it in verse two. Mm -hmm. A bishop then must be blameless. Mm -hmm. Right? Husband mm -hmm. of one wife. Right. Temperate. Mm -hmm. Sober minded. Mm -hmm. You know that? Yes. Of good behavior. Mm -hmm. Hospitable. Yeah. 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 He has got to be able to teach. Now who? Now watch this. What you see now, you can't invite everybody to do it. Yeah. 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 What's that now? Nah? You got to can't do this. Yeah. Can't stand up, get in a scripture, line by line. Yeah. Chapter by chapter, verse by chapter. Can't do it to save their life. <laughs> but they can tell you what I want me to do. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Want to do it? Want to do it? Tattoo. I know you 
go 12 step program. Tell you, man. I don't need to teach you no five and fifteen ways to be blessed. Uh -huh. I don't need to teach you how to do next in line for miracles. Thank you. I need to teach you the word of God. Why? Because it's good for Dr. Munch and for reproof. When you are wrong, it'll tell you that you're wrong. Yes. When it's wrong, it'll tell you how to get it right. Uh -huh. Yes. For instruction in righteousness, it'll tell you how to live your life in a manner that's pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. And what's the purpose of all that? Mm -hmm. That the man of God may be perfect, perfect. right, mm -hmm. perfect, complete, mature, like thoroughly, Jesus. Like Jesus. equipped for every word. Since the word got all that kind of power in it. Yeah. Yeah. Since the word got that kind of power in it. Yeah. Yeah. If you stand up in front of somebody, why would you use anything else? You better say it. All right, now. Yeah, why would you use anything else right. if you can do all of that? Chapter 4, verse 1, here it is. Yeah. I charge you, therefore, before God. That right before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, since the Word, since the word got all that going on, who would judge you as the living and the dead, as the appearing of the kingdom, here it is. Do what? Read the Word. Uh, word. All this other stuff. All this sinking sand. All this other stuff. Let's tell y'all something. Like I said, I don't care what folks get mad about it. If, if folks don't get up, if somebody don't get up in front of you and they don't have a Bible to use it. Sinking sand. And even if they got a Bible, they're not using it. That's, that's a problem. So what are you getting? I can tell you what you're getting, but I don't want to say it. Here. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you're getting. So he says, preach the what? Word. Word. Be ready in season and out. I don't care if the culture said right or the culture said wrong. I don't care if it's popular or not. Right. Preach the word. word. Right. In season and out of season. Watch this. Convince. <laughs> you preach the word, convince folks that they're wrong. Right? Yeah, convince them that they're wrong. Rebuke. Your proof. Yeah. It's kind of like getting a spanking. <laughs> right? The word will. Y'all say the word will whip you on it. Jason. And then you want to encourage them, exhort them, right? Yes. But here it is. This one lies on the line. Here it is. It tells you how to do it. Long. It tells you how to do it. Long. It just says. Not long. 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 So I don't ever stop doing it. It seems like it's not working. It seems like they're hard headed. I don't have to preach it five times. They're still doing the same old thing. Long suffering. I keep at it. Here long milk. I keep at it. Man. I keep at it. And I don't know about the other preachers, but I got I, what helps me is I know how stubborn I was. Ted Tuna. I know how long it took me to get there. Come on, man. Why ain't tripping with nobody? Tell Preach the word, be ready, see now, see the to exhort. With all long suffering and teaching. Doctrine, which means teaching. Disciple. Can't worry about being popular. Disciple. Amen. Amen. You know, I tell folks when they call me, I say, I want you to know I'm probably going to be the, when you call me, I'm probably going to be the, the first and the last time. <laughs> And when I get there, if you still want me to come, I'm going to make the best of what I got while I got it. Amen. Amen. You might not come back. <laughs> you can tell when you go places that's barren on the roof. Mm -hmm. You bring the word to look at you like you got five years. Yeah. You come by me. 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 Y'all know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. God, we, we thank God. Amen. Yeah. For his sanctifying power. Yes. Amen. And we thank God for his men of God who he has called to do his work. Mm -hmm. And the only way that, that we can do it is God. It called? We don't have it in ourselves to do it. Amen. And God uses us. Amen. Amen. Now let's thank God for all your uh, attendance here. Um, Time for us to move on. Uh, so thank you. We're going to have a fellowship break in the back, and then after which we'll uh, come back in here for our closing uh, worship service.
from Reese with the two lines of the Supreme Court.